You've probably already noticed, but retro gaming is quite a big thing nowadays. Gamers with cherished memories of video games of yesteryear just love to spend their money on compilations or modern re-releases of classic games, and like-minded developers create brand new experiences with aesthetics and gameplay designed to scratch that retro gaming itch. How many of them really nail it, though? It's all well and good to make a pixel art side-scroller and call it retro, but the cream of the modern retro crop knows exactly how to make a game feel like it travelled in time from that era, even if it makes use of up-to-date graphics and gameplay to achieve that effect. After all, we often remember things as being way better than they actually were, and a great retro developer understands that. As such, for this video we're listing 10 games that we think best understand the retro vibe they were trying to evoke, and managed to wrap their players in a rose-tinted blanket of cosy nostalgia. Oh, and if you're worried that the Triple Jump crew are perhaps too young to remember some of the games these titles are trying to emulate, don't worry, because our writer is really, really old. In fact, I think he's already gone to bed, so can we all just keep the noise down, yeah? Okay, thanks. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 modern games that perfectly capture the retro vibe. Number 10. Sonic Mania Sonic the Hedgehog's trajectory since his Mega Drive glory days has had more ups and downs than Chemical Plant Zone Act 2. If, if that means anything to you, it, it won't if you've not played Sonic, but never mind. But one of the biggest ups is undoubtedly 2017's Sonic Mania. This return to the Speedy Hedgehog's 2D roots only exists thanks to Sonic's talented community of fan developers, and yet it's sold and reviewed better than most of the Hedgehog's more recent outings developed by Sonic Team themselves. This is probably because Sonic Mania offers jilted Sonic fans the chance to once again explore detailed and dynamic 2D worlds at breakneck speeds, many of which are remixed from previous Sonic titles. These reimagined zones tend to stick to the original formula for the first act, and then add new features for the second, such as oil ocean smog or chemical plants springy fluids. This all results in a high-speed experience that feels both old and new, helped to along by an excellent soundtrack full of pulsating remixes and fantastic original tunes. Oh, and best of all, it only features Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Eggman in starring roles. No Shadows, Silvers, Bigs, or any of the other superfluous cast members that have polluted the Sonic franchise since its glory days. Wait, hang on, what's that armadillo doing there? Number 9. The Messenger if there's one thing that embodies 80s and 90s console gaming, it's side-scrolling ninja action. The Western world had just started to discover the coolness that is the fighting ninja, and whether you owned a Nintendo, a Sega, or an Amiga, chances are that these black-clad dudes were plastered all over your screen at one point or another. In 2018, Devolver Digital published The Messenger, a game that takes more than a few cues from classic NES trilogy Ninja Gaiden. In it, players take on the role of a ninja from a hidden village, who takes on the forces of the Demon King. The gameplay and visuals echo the aforementioned Ninja Gaiden, but the developers made clever and careful use of more modern development techniques to ensure that The Messenger is as good as you remember those ninja games of old to be. One such modern addition involves a bit of time-bending trickery. Should our katana-wielding protagonist fall in battle, he'll be forced to exchange time shards with a mysterious demon named Quarble, who will rewind time and grant him another chance. The only complaint we have with the messenger is the demon's name. Who on earth would call an all-powerful demon with control over time itself Quarble? Sounds like the noise I make when my lemonade goes down the wrong way. Number 8. Xeno Crisis Another mainstay of 80s and 90s action games is Aliens, specifically aliens with elongated heads, dark, chitinous forms, and extending jaws that prey upon tooled-up marines with futuristic automatic weapons and motion sensors. Basically, everything wanted to be just like the movie Aliens, and there are a host of classic titles that back up that claim, and some modern ones too. One recent release chose to take Aliens-inspired visual ambience and layer it on top of gameplay that closely resembles Smash TV. 
Bitmap Bureau's Xeno Crisis was released in 2019 and is a top-down twin-stick shooter with classic gameplay. Players choose one of two protagonists and take on screen-sized arenas mowing down alien abominations in fast-paced, desperate firefights where keeping light on your feet while constantly pumping that trigger finger is the key to survival. Xeno Crisis doesn't just capture that retro feeling by slapping an aliens-inspired paint job on top of a top-down shooter, either. No, these heroes at Bitmap Bureau went the extra mile, releasing an actual Mega Drive cartridge in 2019, complete with old-school Mega Drive packaging and a chunky manual. Don't worry, though, if you don't have Sega's 16-bit beast lying around, you can still buy this game digitally for PC and consoles. It wouldn't be very retro of you, though, would it? Number 7. Horizon Chase Turbo If you've played classic driving games like OutRun, Lotus Turbo Challenge, or Chase HQ, you'll remember that they had you racing ahead with a road laid out before you, twisting and undulating with turns and elevation changes. On the horizon waits an enticing landscape or a distant city, but no matter how hard you race and for how long, you'll never reach it. Beautifully encapsulating the feel of these games for the modern gamer, and even capturing those unattainable horizon vistas, is the appropriately named Horizon Chase Turbo. Created by Brazilian developer a Aquiris, Aquiris Game Studio, Horizon Chase Turbo launched on various home consoles in 2019, with the Play Asia exclusive Vita version being one of the handheld's very last physical releases. Taking that retro racing style and enhancing it with 3D graphics and an enjoyable drift-based handling system, the game offers players the chance to race on tracks from across the world, vying for first position while collecting fuel, turbo boosts, and special tokens that unlock new cars and events. Developers used modern graphical capabilities to create an aesthetically pleasing, old-school driving experience with a pumping soundtrack that makes you feel like you're racing through a retro-inspired fever dream. Just keep going, and you might reach that horizon one day. Number 6. Blazing Chrome the next game on our list is such a clear tribute to a very specific series that it could very easily be mistaken for an official entry into said series. If you've not seen Blazing Chrome before, go on, take a good look, and see if you can identify its foremost inspiration. That's right, it's Bubble Bobble. Oh no, sorry, it says here it's, it's Contra, obviously. Developed by Joy Masher and releasing across multiple formats in 2019, Blazing Chrome gives players the chance to step into the shoes of one of two protagonists and lay waste to an army of unholy amalgamations of flesh and robot parts in an attempt to save the remnants of humanity. This all results in that signature Contra-style blood-pumping fire-and-forget action and reflex-testing difficulty with very few chances to stop for breath. It's this feeling of being propelled through endless firefights at breakneck speed as a sci-fi world crumbles around you that Blazing Chrome really nails, just like the 16-bit Contra titles did before it. There's also a noticeable Metal Slug vibe in there too, just so you know it's not some kind of one-influence pony. Blazing Chrome represents a time when games were concerned with one thing and one thing only – non-stop, explosive action. It represents spray-and-pray gunplay at its finest, and we salute it from behind cover. Number 5. Undertale Unlike many of the other games on our list, Undertale doesn't solely rely on reviving a particular genre or series, and definitely adopted a modern cutting-edge approach to storytelling and sidestepping expectations. However, the game's art direction and overall vibe definitely makes you feel like you're playing a classic brought back from the early days of gaming, or even a few of them at once. Undertale's confirmed influences include the likes of 1991's SNES RPG Brandish, the Mario & Luigi role-playing games, and Earthbound. We think this last one is especially evident during Undertale's top-down exploration sections, and this is no surprise since Undertale developer Toby Fox had been known to work on fan hacks of Earthbound before casually cranking out one of the most beloved indie titles of our time. It's not just old-school RPGs that Undertale's visuals 
evoke, though, as the battle encounters have an even older school feel. The pixelated line art and limited colour palette bring pre-third generation gaming to mind, and if you're old enough to have played early illustrated adventure games, or at least had a go at a retro gaming event, you'll probably know what I mean. Combine all of this with a top-tier retro soundtrack, and you've got an extremely authentic retro experience that will really make you think, too. That last part could be a pro or a con, though, depending on your outlook. Number 4. Ion Fury First-person shooters have definitely come a long way. Today, we're used to being fully immersed in incredible 3D worlds, swept off our feet by cinema-quality set pieces, and tested by advanced enemy AI. Back in the olden days, though, FPS titles had you trudging through similar-looking low-res environments as pixelated 2D enemies homed in on you, attacking with nary a thought for tactics or positioning, and you were lucky if you were even able to look upwards. The thing is, these games were still a hell of a lot of fun, and Void Point, the developers of Ion Fury, understand that. This old-school shooter, released in 2019, deliberately uses jagged textures, 2D enemies, and other such techniques to make the player feel like they're playing an FPS from 1996, or more specifically, Jute Nukem 3D. Ion Fury comes across as something of a love letter to Mr. Nukem's glory days, and while it adds some pretty lighting and a few other modern tweaks, it authentically captures the 90s FPS aesthetic, right down to the protagonist's grimacing face displayed in the HUD Doom style. Ion Fury serves as a prequel to 2016 multi-directional shooter Bombshell. Unfortunately, Bombshell was pretty bad, but at least we got a nice retro FPS out of it, so, uh, you know, silver linings and all that. Number 3. Agalos Agalos is a biblical term that can be translated as messenger or envoy. This means there are actually two games on this list called The Messenger. Kind of. Anyway, released across multiple formats in 2018, Agalos is a 2D action platformer with RPG elements. While there are plenty of those floating around out there, the specific gameplay, art style, and overall vibe of Agalos absolutely screams Wonder Boy. The Wonder Boy series was birthed with the original arcade release in 1986, but as the franchise continued, so did it evolve. Wonder Boy in Monster World, for example, was a delightful adventure where players not only explored caverns and dungeons filled with cutesy monsters, but they also wandered around villages, interacted with NPCs, and shopped for items and equipment. It's here that Agalos finds its inspiration, and developers Storybird Games did a stellar job of capturing that colourful, cutesy, adventuring vibe, to the point that the only real downside that reviewers could find was that it was a little on the short side. The gameplay is well crafted, the challenge is just right, and the great soundtrack will take us all back to a better time when we were all just young wonder boys and wonder girls ourselves. Number 2. Legend of Grimrock as evidenced by the likes of Ultima and Final Fantasy, many early role-playing games were born when developers wanted to translate the rules of tabletop adventure RPGs like Dungeons & Dragons into an electronic medium. This is especially true of the first-person dungeon crawlers that were once prominent. Players would explore a grid-based map stepping from square to square, encountering enemies, traps, and puzzles along the way. Legend of Grimrock, released in 2012, deliberately evokes the likes of Dungeon Master and Might and Magic 3 with its traditional RPG dungeon setting and western fantasy tendencies. While the visuals are clearly updated, Legend of Grimrock maintains that old-school dungeon-crawling atmosphere. It looks exactly like the kind of picture you'd paint in your head if you were playing a tabletop role-playing game and your half-elf wizard was exploring some murky subterranean maze. Another way Legend of Grimrock sticks to its old-school roots is by presenting tough puzzles without offering too many clues on how to solve them. While many modern games would hold your hand through tricky mind-benders deep in their deadliest dungeons, Legend of Grimrock leaves you to it, and so for utmost retro immersion, try it without checking the internet for guides. You know, don't cheat. You couldn't do that back in the day, you had to ask around on the playground. Don't do that either. Oh god, don't do that. And number one, Thimbleweed Park. 
Of all the genres we've touched on in today's list, the one that's the least prevalent these days is the point-and-click adventure game. The likes of Discworld, Broken Sword, and Grim Fandango have all but disappeared, with many more recent attempts at revivals adding gameplay mechanics from other genres to try and appeal to modern audiences. Of course, the genre isn't completely dead, but it is only just hanging on. One recent attempt at keeping it going was Thimbleweed Park. Developed by former LucasArts employees Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick, Thimbleweed Park bears a striking resemblance to Maniac Mansion, LucasArts' first self-published game. Maniac Mansion, also developed by Mr. Gilbert and Mr. Winnick, tells a B-movie horror-inspired tale of teenagers, mad scientists, and sentient meteors, and delighted fans with its writing, humor, and quirky puzzles. While Thimbleweed Park deals with the seemingly darker subject matter of FBI agents investigating a murder, it still maintains a comedic feel and absolutely nails that early point-and-click style. I mean, considering it was developed by the same people who created the games it was inspired by, I suppose that is to be expected. But let's face it, it looks far more authentically retro than Return to Monkey Island's modern zany art style. Bring back pixels! That's what I say.